got the call on my cell phone at about four that afternoon. I was gliding down the highway, screaming along the interstate to reach the exit that would bring me to the trailer park. It was Maxine. She was in a frantic rage, talking about how she needed directions, saying she was lost and needed to see me. This was all happening so fast, I didn't know what to think. Asking myself, who was Maxine? Till it hit me, Maxine was the girl I met in the mall like three weeks ago. I never expected her to call. She was beautiful though. I guess that's why I've forgotten about her. Listen, Maxine says, I need a help. While she was talking, I thought, why would she be thinking to call me? Of all people, I'm serious. Three weeks have passed, and now she decides to call? Do you have a place for me to stay just for a while? She finished asking. She sounded shy, but also like, she was in some serious trouble. Immediately I thought, yeah, sure, why not? Considering the tone in her voice. Let's not forget, I'd had my eye on her for some time now. Almost about long, as long as it took her to call me. Besides, kicking up enough nerve to give her my number when I did, the way I did, was exhausting enough. Spending time with her on one day would keep me occupied almost a good week. She would look at me in this strange, precarious kind of a way. Kind of threw me off balance at first, but come to think of it, sometimes she'd come visit me on my breaks, spending 10, 20 minutes at that. I never expected it to end up like this, though. At first, when she came around, I could have sworn I'd blown my chances with her. But surprisingly, she stayed hanging around. Saying she'd meet me at the mall entrance at the end of my shift and we'd hang out and speak. That's what perhaps given me the courage to give her my number when I did in the way I did. We spoke to each other that afternoon. And she told me about her last relationships how she had gotten into a, a marriage at such a very young age. Listening to her, I got the impression she wasn't happy. But the story she told was compelling. That couldn't have stopped me from listening to her though. Above all, like I said before, she was gorgeous. I liked her. Like I said, I never imagined things would end up like this though. I headed towards my exit, put on my right signal to switch lanes when I asked out, where are you exactly? She didn't know, saying she was lost. See if you could read the exit, the signs. Riverdale, the static in my phone began to break up. All I heard her say was river. But I was so familiar with the area at the time. I knew exactly where she was. Stay right there, I told her. Don't move. Park anywhere. Stay right there. Don't move. Before I hung up the phone, I had her give me a landmark. I knew Riverdale Road was a highly industrial piece of property. One of the main attractions in the area at the time. What's that? She asked. A commercial residence, I screamed back out at her. Burger King, McDonald's, Shell, Sitco, probably franchise, anything, restaurant, gas station, wherever's closest, stay right there, don't move. I realized the minutes in my phone were running out. She screamed out. There's a plaza coming up on my left. I can see a pet cove. And there's a old uh, a Staples, it looks like old country. She couldn't make it out. Something like that, I can't really make out the rest. 
just pull over right there stay where wait for me I pulled up in front of her car in the parking lot we spoke she told me she was leaving her husband after four years of marriage she was sick of him not paying enough attention to her I didn't feel compassion for her at first for it though because I'd heard that line before plus I liked her she could do a lot better than that, I thought. She was giving me a hint, maybe to hook up or something. We spoke for some time that afternoon. She claimed she was on the run and had no other place to stay at the time. I offered help. I don't have much, but you're welcome to stay here with me just for a while, just till you get your shit together. I got in my car. Headed back towards my place. Funny, I couldn't help but wonder though. Why me, of all people? Why me? But I had no compassion. I had no time to, compl to contemplate the decision I'd made. I'd already made it. We'd arrived at my trailer park within 10 minutes. She opened the trunk of her car. There was luggage, clothes, baskets, all over the place. Stuffed inside the trunk of her car. What the hell is that, I thought. I noticed the expression on her face. It seems that she had planned on moving in with me, depending whether I said yes or no. What if I hadn't answered the phone? Then what? What if my cell phone didn't ring? She followed me up the trailer park steps. You could hear the woods squeak as we stomped up together. Now thinking back on it, I should have never ever told her that I lived in the trailer park alone. Doing so was something I later learned to regret. Listen, I have one rule, and that is no one else is allowed in here while I'm gone. She seemed all right with it at first. Two months it went by, like a breeze, so small it felt like a week. Things couldn't have been going any better. In spite of the effort I'd put into making Maxine feel comfortable, and despite of all the, as much as I pressed to her not to let anyone else in while I was gone, I clearly remember going back to work Tuesday night, I think it was. She wasn't at work that time. And I was sitting home early that day, because business was slow. When I made it back home, I noticed there was something else, something odd about it. Someone else has been in this house. I could have sent Maxine home then. I should have, but I didn't. I was too tired, too tired to argue. It was the calls at night, though, that bothered me the most strange men. Call, looking for her. At that point, my feelings for her had started to slowly decline. I tried brushing it off at first, but then it hit me. I'm getting nowhere with her. As much as I liked her initially from the start, She started to, sh to show up with lots of cash. Not tips from waitressing at her job, no. Oodles of dough. I'm talking fifties, hundreds, not tens and twenties. Mm -hmm. Now, what I was thinking was not letting this get the best of me. Word got around the neighborhood, the trailer park, that Maxine was turning tricks. 
back in June. And now look, it's September. And the whole block has got their eyes on me in my place, wondering what's going on. I remember picking her up from the bar that night. She'd been drinking a lot, so I had to cover her up just a little. That's when it happened. What? Another inmate asked. I swear, I didn't even have sex with her. With that? I finished speaking. Three dudes sat on the jail benches, listening. Frank, the guy with the net stacking cap, passed me a rolled up cigarette. I wonder who's pimping who? Another fellow spoke out. Almost as if he were confused or something. You trying to tell me that you guys weren't even dating? She wasn't even your girl? Nope. Not only that, we didn't even make love. Never. The, de the detective that arrested me was Detective Crane. But you weren't her pimp. It didn't matter. As long as we lived under the same roof, I was guilty. Guilty by association or whatever you want to call it. The judge slammed his mallet down, giving me three years. I was walking down Main Street when I saw a cruiser flashing his high beams at a woman up ahead. Hands on the car, the officer screamed forcefully as he brushed his hand up Maxine's naked leg. She turned her head with eye level to mine. I watched the officer's badge. It read, Detective Crane. Where's the money, he shouted. Then he shoved her into the trailer.